999, Council Members Stein and Dominey. It approves a state grant of $40,000 to Metro Water Services to construct and operate a boat dock at the Omahundro Water Plant. May I have a motion? Moved and seconded. Are there questions on 999? Seeing none, those in favor of 999 signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. Um, Mr. Snyder, thank you for being here today. 2014, 1005, Council Member Stein and Langster approves a state grant of $41,744 to the Nashville Career Advancement Center to establish programs to serve out of school and older youth through the Youth Work Experience Pilot Program. It moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor? I'm sorry. You press your button, please. That. Thank you. You're, you're recognized. Thank you, Chair. What kind of jobs are these kids going to have the opportunity to engage in? Welcome. Hello. Um, this, these jobs um, are specifically mandated through the state to mirror the state ECDs, sex, excuse me, seven sectors of targeted employment. That includes things like automotive, business services, IT, and healthcare. However, our young people very often have not worked at all. So we're looking for the kinds of work experience opportunities that are going to prepare them for entry-level jobs in those fields. So we will be looking at very introductory level business services, very introductory level customer service, very introductory level manufacturing, um, experiential kinds of learning, as well as a real focus on um, welcome to the workplace and this is what it's like. How many hours a week will they be engaged in this? They'll be working for 20 hours a week for about eight weeks. It should be a total of around 30 young people across three of our four counties, or four of our four counties. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, those in favor of 1,005 signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. It will be recommended. Thank you very much for being here today. 2014, 1006, Councilman Stein authorizes Department of Law to settle the personal injury claim of Pam Makami against Metro for the amount of $8,830. It is moved and is seconded. Is there discussion or questions? Seeing none, those in favor of 1006 say aye. Opposed, no. 1006 is recommended moves us to bills on second reading 2014-663, which declares the former Jerry Baxter Middle School property located at 3515 Gallatin Pike to be surplus and authorizes director of public property to sell the property in accordance with standard procedures. This bill is to be withdrawn if by the request of the administration, if I might have that motion. It's moved and seconded. Any discussion about withdrawing? Seeing none, those in favor of the motion to withdraw say aye. Those opposed? 663 will be moved to be withdrawn. 686, Council Members Gilmore, Stein, and Tigert authorizes Director of Public Property to accept two parcels of property from Metro and from the Metro Development and Housing Agency for construction of the West Riverfront Park improvements and amphitheater. Moved and seconded. Is there discussion or questions? Seeing none, those in favor of 686 say aye. Opposed, no. 686 will be recommended. 688, Council Members Maynard, Stein, and Matthews approves agreements between Metro, the Metro Hospital Authority, and several private entities for the privatization and continued operation of the Bordeaux Long-Term Care and J.B. Knowles Home Facilities. I may have, first have a motion, and second, there is a proposed amendment which we uh, take up. Um, Mr. Yeah, it's just a housekeeping. <laughs> Primarily housekeeping. It replaces the exhibits to the ordinance with the new exhibits, which are the, the actual contracts in their final executed form. Okay. Any other questions on the amendment? Um, those in favor of the amendment say aye. Opposed, no. The amendment is adopted. Before we, we begin our discussion, just to let 
council members know, we have folks here from Signature, we have folks here from Vision Autumn, we have folks here, at, we have Ed Street here, we obviously have representatives, leadership from um, hospitals, and obviously Mr. Riebling and Mr. Solomon are here to answer questions. We begin with Councilman Maynard. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate everyone that is here on today. Back in 2009, we first began discussing uh, the future of both Bordeaux Hospital, given its heritage, given its legacy and its history, as well as the Knowles home. And then how do we focus on General Hospital to make sure that it has lasting sustainability, that it continues to provide health care for any and all residents of Davidson County, regardless of their ability to pay, to provide a public safety net hospital pursuant not only to our charter, but our, and, and to me, our moral obligation. Uh, from that discussion in 2009, I, I stand proud as a sponsor for this bill of uh, Mr. Riebling, uh, Mr. Solomon, uh, Jason Boyd, interim CEO of the Hospital Authority, along with working with our private partners to do two things. One, ensure the continued quality of care for the residents of Bordeaux and Knowles, and in fact, not only to continue the high quality, but to enhance it. Uh, Metro, we don't have the resources to invest in those, to invest in Bordeaux, but our private partners will make significant investments that not only will ensure the high quality of care, but will also improve that, that quality of care while maintaining it in the Bordeaux area. Uh, it is an economic engine in that area. It is a major employer in that area, and we will continue in Bordeaux. For that commitment, I just applaud uh, the work that has been done. Uh, second, is that it will save the taxpayers dollars. Uh, I believe right now that there are private entities such as Signature, such as those entities that are running those that are better prepared, better positioned to provide nursing home care as well as adult daycare and adult care uh, for our senior citizens uh, than we do. And so I believe that by allowing them to occupy this area within the healthcare industry for our beloved senior citizen that in that area is the right thing to do while allowing us to save money. So in essence, we will improve health care for our citizens and save the taxpayers money. That is an incredible feat that has been accomplished. And then the icing on the cake is that we will maybe lose, maybe, at most, 30 employees. Maybe. And we're going to try our best to make sure all of those 30 find a job either at the hospital or somewhere in metro government to make such a large or such, such a significant transition with this transaction and to accomplish it while minimizing joblessness for those employees who have given their life to serving our community is just um, astronomical and I applaud you all. Finally, it allows us to focus on General Hospital and allow us to focus our energies and our efforts on how do we make General Hospital the best hospital given the fact that the winds of health care are changing as we speak, not only with the Affordable Care Act, but also with other things that are happening regarding for del delivery of health care. So as a sponsor, Mr. Chairman, I thank you for indulging me, and I ask for uh, my colleagues here, uh, here at not only the Budget Committee, but also in Health and Hospitals Planning, and then later tomorrow uh, that they'll approve it on second reading. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Claiborne. There you go. Sorry. Mr. Chair, I just wanted to, uh, to uh, reaffirm that there is no substantive change in the amendment to what we were, had explained to us uh, last month when this was first brought to us. No. That, thank that's the correct statement. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Tiger. If I could get an explanation of how the bid process on this deal worked the same or differently as any other normal deal, uh, it talked about the consultant contacting uh, potential bidders as opposed to our purchasing department. So that's the, the direction I'd like to hear a little bit more about. Mr. Riebling, Mr. Solomon. I'll start and obviously um, Mr. Solomon may help out. Uh, obviously, this is a very specialized asset. It's not like buying um, paper clips or even engineering services. It's very specialized. And uh, we felt the need to engage uh, someone experienced in the uh, financial side of the healthcare industry to assist us in the process. Uh, we brought them on as a consultant. 
Uh, they then uh, worked with legal in, in, in sending out uh, uh, a request, uh, put together a book um, that, that light, uh, laid out all the, the story of Bordeaux and Knowles uh, so that the, uh, the, the business world uh, would have uh, real information about those facilities so that they could um, submit a, um, a, a, a proper, a detailed response. Uh, that went out to um, literally uh, hundreds or more of people in the healthcare industry all over the country. Uh, we then um, uh, set a deadline to submit proposals like we normally do. Uh, we received six proposals, uh, obviously, would love to have more, but we got six. Uh, then working with our consultant and staff, we weeded through those, uh, interviewed three or four of the teams, I can't remember, I think it was at least three, maybe four of the proposals so we to get more information from them because again, it's, it's a little more, it's a lot, much more complicated than, than a normal something that you normally buy in procurement, uh, and um, determined, uh, I think it was a unanimous felt thought process that the, the, uh, the, the team that, uh, that we're dealing with today um, represented the best interest uh, of the city, not only from a financial arrangement, but also taking into consideration the uh, patient quality, the concerns for the, the, the residents going forward, uh, the concerns for the Bordeaux community, who was going to keep a, a viable operation on that campus. Uh, and so um, w was it the highest uh, proposal in terms of dollars to Metro? Probably not. Uh, we could have just potentially sold beds and been out of the been out of it completely. Uh, but looking at the totality of the situation, it was clear to us that this was the best proposal for the city. Okay, and the way I understand it, the, the patients there, the residents there now, uh, there, there's no change in their status. That's correct, that's correct. Uh, indigent patients in the future, uh, my wife had an aunt years, 40 years ago that was there. Um, Ninety-nine plus percent of the patients at Bordeaux uh, either qual are, are either on Medicare or Medicaid. Uh, the changes in, in health care insurance over the last half century, um, uh, almost all uh, parties have Medicaid, at least Medicaid coverage. Okay, thank you. Councilwoman Langster. Thank you, Mr. Chair. M let me say my interest in, in all of this is that uh, uh, Bordeaux, uh, Long-Term Care, and J.B. Knowles uh, have been in um, the North Nashville Bordeaux community longer than I've been living. And it's, 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 at one time it was described as one of the best nursing facilities in Davidson County. Um, but my question is, is about the, uh, the employees. That's who, that, that who, ha who has my uh, wide eye and concern right now. The employees that are, that, are going to be lost through this transition. Mr. Evelyn, is it in their city employees as it stands now? Is it any way that um, a quick buyout or are there any monies being offered to them in uh, because they're losing their job with uh, the city now? Councilor, yes. We, we obviously thought that concern for the employees was also a, a, a preeminent part of this transaction. Uh, and again, we could have gotten out of the business completely and all the employees would have been um, literally looking for a job. Um, but what we've done is end up with an arrangement in which 90% plus of the employees will be transitioned into a new job uh, working for either Signature on the nursing home side uh, or, or, or Autumn, Autumn on, the, on the assisted living side. Uh, and to assist them in the transition, because it will be a change, uh, we are uh, proposing to, to pay them a, 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 a transition payment to all employees, even those that are going to get a job with Signature or Autumn, uh, that's based on their seniority. Uh, we're also proposing that we're going to provide some additional monies to cover some health care costs for a year because health care premiums are a little higher for family coverage uh, than they are through the Metro Insurance. Uh, we are dedicated to try to find uh, a position for the 30 or so that there's not a place for at one of these two institutions, well, Bordeaux, Knowles is going to keep all of the employees. Okay. Um, and so we're looking for a, a place in Metro, either at the hospital or somewhere else for the, the 30 or so that'll be uh, misplaced. And if for those 30, if any of those aren't found a job, 
uh, then we'll provide some additional benefits to them to again ease in the transition until they can find another employment somewhere. So I think we've structured this um, uh, uh, compassionately because we do care about the employees to try to provide them with some assistance to ease in the transformation to the new program. So have meetings occurred to explain all these details to the employees? They have, and Jason Boyd might want to, Jason, you want to amplify on that a little bit? Sure. Uh, obviously, we've, we've tried to over-communicate and communicate as best we can. Um, I know just last week, our, this process is going through our board as well, and our board fully supports these transition payments that Mr. Reebling's uh, speaking of. So what will happen next is communicating with those employees um, whose positions will be identified and potential, potentially not have a job going forward. And that's when our work will start with them. I mean, we've already identified several that, that match positions that we have open at General Hospital that can transfer over. Um, so it'll be individual individually working with those employees. And we've also had uh, Metro HR on site at Bordeaux and Knowles for a couple different days helping with whether it's resume building, job placement, um, questions that employees have regarding their, their pension benefits, et cetera. So we continue to communicate. And as we get closer, we'll individually be working with those employees to try to do everything we can to help them. Okay, I have received several, several calls from employees. It was early on, so I don't know if this was before the talk, but over the weekend I did see, receive two, two calls that they sounded very much in distress, and I told them I would get with them after this meeting or council meeting. My next question is, what's the status of J.B. Knowles and uh, Bordo right now as to uh, admissions? Are we? Are you accepting admissions? Well, Knowles is is pretty. It's 100 percent full. It's basically 98 percent full. Uh, uh, the nursing home is, uh, for budget reasons, we're keeping it around 220, um, and seems to be working pretty well, keeping it at that level right now. So you're you're not accepting uh, you're not no. accepting no. admissions in the border at this time. I think the easiest way is what we do have, we manage our admissions to what we have, the staff and the capacity to handle and to live within our, our, our budget requirements. Obviously, we have folks that, that move on to other levels of care and we have some folks that backfill those. We've, we've been around the 220 mark. Um, we do accept admissions to our vent unit. Um, we've been accepting admissions to that unit. So it's, it's a very controlled, managed process. Um, to say that we're accepting all admissions, no, that's not a fair statement. But we, we do accept admissions, um, whether it be our vent unit and, and some of our other skilled units. So in other words, if someone walked in and wanted to admit a family member, um, it would it's looked at a little more differently than it did this time last year? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and my next point, I was introduced to a gentleman to, as I came in that he is the new director at J.B. Knowles. Is he a Metro employee or is he under the new company? Um, Mr. Uh, you're probably referencing Mr. Paul Miller. Uh, Paul Miller is, is an employee of MJM Associates. It's, it's, a, it's a management company um, that the hospital authority uses at this time to manage Knowles Home. So he's not Metro? No, ma'am. No, no benefits from Metro? No, ma'am. I had one more question, which I lose my, my mind. You can uh, come to the planning committee, too, because this will be on the agenda again at 4.30. Okay. Thank you very much, then. Thank you. Councilwoman Wiener. Thank you, Chair. I just would like to hear from our friends who, who took their time to come down. And in terms of what's the future going to look like for the program, for each, Knowles and for Bordeaux, three, five years down the road, are, are we going to expand? Are we going to stay the same? What what kind of plans do you have moving forward? You mean are they going to? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, that was the Mr. collective. Mr. Wartley or Mr. Shane, would you like to, to join us at the podium? If you understand the question. I think so. I mean, from the board. Please. From the Bordeaux side. Mr. Shane, please, who is with Signature, please tell us, tell us what you do and introduce yourself. Welcome. Okay. I'm Andy Shane. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of the Urban Segment. And one other thing, if you would just pull the microphone up just a little bit. Okay. Can you, Thank is that you. better? Okay. Thank you. 
Um, we plan on running 240 beds, uh, to answer the question that was asked earlier as well. Uh, we plan on running 240 beds and we will be admitting patients. So, once we take over in May. <coughs> Excuse me. The long-term plan Council is... Councilman Wiener, use your microphone, please, so we can all hear you. Thanks. She asked if that's the long-term plan. Is that your long-term plan? Thank you. The long-term plan is to keep 120 beds at Bordeaux after, after we build at Skyline. Am I saying the hospital right? Mm -hmm. Skyline. Um, when we build at, a, at an alternate location, um, we will move 168 beds there, and we will keep 120 beds at... Uh, the Bordeaux campus, we felt it really important to keep the heritage of Bordeaux and keep beds at Bordeaux. Does that help? Thank you. It does. Mr. Hampton, would you like to join us and, and talk about Autumn's plans? Knowles? Good afternoon. Mark Hampton, uh, native of Nashville. In terms of the real estate piece, uh, <clears throat> he's absolutely right. A hundred plus beds will be moved to um, right across the street from Skyline Hospital. The remaining campus will be developed into senior housing. One of the two towers will become uh, apartments for persons 55 years of age and above. And then the rest of the open space will be cottages. Uh, we'll start off with about 120 cottages. Uh, and then over a 10 year period, just develop the whole campus. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Langster. What is odd? Autumn. I heard that name called twice. Mr. Hampton, you want to describe your, what, what you all do? What we want to do is uh, rebrand the community into a comprehensive senior living community to be called Autumn Hills. We had a community meeting um, not this Saturday, Saturday before. It was very well attended by the Bordeaux Hills residents. Approximately seven people were there, and they were very, 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 very supportive. Uh, Mr. Riebling and um, somebody else was there from Metro. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? See none. Those in favor of 688 say aye. aye. Opposed, no. 688 will be recommended. Um, we stand adjourned. You got a question on the bill we just got through with? No, I have a question since we have six minutes. Uh, question for Rich. In the uh, newspaper, Tennessee Town and City, that was on our desk today or in our mailbox today, it talks about the budgetary issues at the state level with sales tax and other forms of taxation being significantly below. What is the impact on us uh, if, the, if the state sales tax are below projections for the fifth out of six months, et cetera? Our, our sales tax projections are probably running a little bit ahead of the states, and so we're running uh, essentially right on track with what we budgeted for this fiscal year. We may be up or down a little bit, but very, very little uh, for the course of the fiscal year. So how does that work? When the state comes forward with releasing their figures, you take it and you either agree or disagree and you adjust it? Well, we, we receive each month of, of, from the state uh, an amount that is coming our way. And, and so we know. So Nashville's economy is better than yes. the other part yes. of the state. That's so you're saying, trying. yeah, that's what you're I'm saying. We're, say, still, yeah. we're, we're yeah. still on track. Yes, sir. All right. And the chair a couple of weeks ago uh, mentioned about uh, the progress on the uh, Sulphurdale ballpark, and we ran out of time. I didn't get a chance to ask you this question. The figure that that we were told for the ballpark versus what was bid came in higher. It's my understanding. What is the the normal game plan is value engineering. Yeah, the, the, that, the amount that was put in that proposal was simply to arrive at a price for the CM. They're still going through value engineering. We don't have a final price on it yet. It'll probably be uh, 30 to 90 days, 60 to 90 days before we have a final price on the ballpark. The, the, a person that bid on the project said, uh, we were under the impression, or we're told, around $38 million, and they were told to submit bids based on a $40 million budget, uh, knowing it could be higher or lower. What, what caused the difference in that communication? I, I don't know precisely, but I think that was done simply so they were comparing apples and apples, so that everybody was pricing their fee off the same amount. Okay. Thank you. We stand adjourned.